When you first arrive at a village, they come out and greet you with singing and dancing. And it's a sign of affection and respect even before they get to know you. And so it's a warm way of bringing you into their community. When I visited that village, they had the dancing and singing and the warm welcome. And we were treated as if we were royalty. And at the very end, an old man came up to me. And he said with tears in his eyes, he said, you are from America. We thought you would never come to this village. We can't believe that you're here. I've heard people to say that trying to respond to this terrible catastrophe in Africa is like spitting in the ocean. But the way I feel is that the ocean is made up of a lot of drops, and we know some of those drops by name. And when it's this child who stands in front of me, or this woman or this man, I just believe so deeply that this person is worth fighting for. There's no trick to it, it's just basic caring. We're an interfaith organization and we work with the religious organizations in Africa and part of the reason why we do that is that particularly in the rural area, which is where most of African people live, the only infrastructure in those areas is what's provided by the churches, the mosques, the traditional healers. So we work across faiths. We work with the churches, uh, all denominations. We work with the mosques, with the Muslim community. We work with the traditional healers as a way of reaching out and beginning to deliver some of these services. Our funding comes from individual donors and also from family foundations, some so-called independent foundations. And uh, the biggest grant that we have by far comes from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And that is the money we're using in 25 villages in southern Malawi to, quote, empower women. We have turned over that project to the women down there, and I don't think it's going too far to say that these are among the very poorest women in the world, and they have produced a miracle there. What we do is to bank on people who seem to be brave and within the context of the nothingness that's there, resourceful in responding locally to very specific problems. The other half of what we do is we come back and visit those villages and see the projects. And when we think somebody is doing a wonderful piece of work and that this is a trustworthy woman or man who's doing it, will support what they're doing through a small grants program. And then if they use it wisely, which we check on, then we'll sustain them for as long as they're doing this work. We're doing a humanitarian service in preventing new infections. And I think we're doing a compassionate service by helping people who are having a hard time because they themselves are HIV positive. We are privileged to work with some extraordinarily brave, creative, and courageous people, the Malawians who do the on-the-ground work. One of the things that some of the programs we work with do is home-based care. Village women are trained to go out to their neighbors who are trying to care for someone with HIV and to bring them some help. That help comes in the form of food, which is often the most pressing thing needed for people who are ill. It comes in the form of medications, simple medications. Most people dying of HIV in Africa are dying without any kind of medications, even an aspirin or a Tylenol. So when that comes, it's a huge thing for them. But probably more than anything, people who live in these villages see their own neighbors who are working with the project, going out to visit someone with HIV, going out to take them food, to take them medicine, to help families. And when they see their neighbors unafraid to go and help, it begins to break down some of the stigma around HIV. In a country of 11.7 million people, 
there are minimally 500,000 AIDS orphans. One of the things we do is support village-level action plans to take care of the orphans in the villages. We provide the caregivers with orphan care kits, and in those kits are emergency blankets, lakuni pala to feed the orphans. And when you're an orphan, there's nobody to pay the school fees, so we pay the school fees and it keeps them in school. When an orphan drops out of school, then he or she is in serious danger of just dropping from the social radar screen, you might say. And they quickly get into trouble after that. One of the few ways in which they can survive is to sell sex or to be exploited as child laborers. So keeping them in school is an important strategy. What can we do? The numbers are so great, it becomes numbing after a while. But the fact is that when this disease strikes, it, it is a human being. It is a person that we're talking about whose life is affected. And small amounts of money go very far in Africa. A hundred dollars, which can provide the high school education for a child for one year, can make an enormous difference in that child's life in terms of making an opportunity possible. Ten dollars can provide medicines for a person for an entire year. It can provide aspirin, it can provide the antibiotics which may stave off an opportunistic infection. It can keep a mother healthy so that she has another year to raise her child if she's herself ill with HIV. The main reason why we do this is the people over there. They are, for all their poverty, incredibly patient and brave and generous people, they're worth fighting for. She would like to thank the Gaia team for caring after orphans here in Matindi. You gave us blankets. Before you came, we were covering ourselves with rags or sacks. You gave us soap. You gave a, a, a beautiful dress, as you can see. Soap, gold oil, and school material, exercise books, and ball pens. She would like Gaia to continue with, the, with its activities so that she can continue with their education. She would like to ask the Almighty God. Patients are being taken care of. They are being bathed. They are eating together with patients. Patients are very happy. Previously, it wasn't there. Gaia has come with very good things. She is thanking Gaia very much. May God bless these people who take care of us. Ya la do me sa, ya ku do me sa, ya ku do me